Welcome back to eSim Studios. This is Daily Tech News episode, I believe, number seven. It is uh, November the 11th, 2023. Let's hit that intro real quick. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Um, it's been a few days, um, a little longer than I had hoped. Um, I was going to try to do these every day, although I do have a lot going on. So then I was like, well, let me do them at least every few days, right? Because then it'll allow some of the tech news to build up and then we'll have some real good juicy stories. And I think I have a, a compiled a few here that um are not only big as far as an impact uh, to me and you but also the tech world um in general um real quick getting into android 14 before we hit the news i have now i was just thinking yesterday i have now android 14 on all my devices i have it on my s23 ultra which i have set up as a webcam uh which i'm recording on i have it on the uh, nothing phone two, and I have Android 14 on the pixel eight pro. Now the official build is on the, um, S 23 ultra. And then I have the beta versions of Android 14 on the nothing phone two and the beta version of Android 14 on the pixel eight pro. But I wanted to get into that to let you know, I think this is the, the best Android build I can remember in a long time. Um, I was using, I was going through all three devices yesterday and just thinking, man, because my S23 Ultra got updated uh, yesterday and I've been using it a lot over uh, probably the last 18 hours or so since it got updated. And it is phenomenal. Like um, it's very smooth, it's very clean. The feature, it's very feature rich. Um, the widgets are very clean. Everything seems way more refined. Seems like it's a very smooth operating system. Um, very elegant, very well put together. Um, some of these releases, I think it was Android 11 or Android 12. I think it was Android 12. It just seemed, I think that one was full of bugs as well. And it just seemed too clunky. It seemed like stuff was out of place. Android 13 cleaned that up quite a bit. But moving into Android 14, it is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. So if you're using a device that has not gotten Android 14 yet, um, please install, don't hesitate to install it. Now, if you have, if there's a beta available, obviously you got to be aware uh, of some bugs here and there, uh, maybe something not working. If there is a beta available for your device and you would choose to install it, but look on the beta builds on the Nothing Phone Two and the Pixel, I have not come across one single bug. And the, these are beta builds. Now you can, that's why it's a beta. But the betas that they're putting out are phenomenal. The battery life on Android 14 is much, much better. Like they've optimized the battery usage, um, screen on time, screen off time. Um, it's just, I really don't have anything negative to say about it. Um, battery, I can, I can tell the battery life on my S23 Ultra has gotten better just in one day. I, I, I can tell. Uh, we'll obviously keep an eye on that, but they really got their stuff together, uh, Android. And it's it's uh, got me excited for the future uh, moving forward. When Android uh, used to put out, going back to 12, but also previous versions, when Android used to put out a preview build or a beta build or something that you can install to basically look forward to, there would be bugs in the past, right? There would be, oh, I got this, I got that, I got a, I got a drain, battery drain, I have a wake lock on. Um, it was always something, right? An app crashes, um, whatever it is. There used to be, it seemed like there was always something. And g moving into 13, I think there was one or two hiccups, but now move. I didn't have any. But now moving into 14, it's like, everything is refined like it is um a phenomenal 
build of Android. And now there's a noticeable difference, and I'm going to record a video on this, Android 14 on the Samsung Galaxy S23. And if you have if you have a S23 series, whether it's these base S23, the S23 Plus, or the S23 Ultra, it is now live as of now, as of yesterday. Samsung pushed the update out for a couple weeks worldwide, but they put it out in stages. Yesterday was the official day that it was released for all the carriers. So check your phone if you haven't already gotten a notification. Um, don't hesitate to download it. Everything's more refined. The pull-down menu, more refined. The um, uh, recents menu, more refined. Um, widgets, more refined. Uh, it's just a, again, I, I can't. I could go on, go on and on and on about Android 14. I was a little skeptical installing it on the Nothing Phone because I am using it as my daily driver right now to test it out. And of course, the Pixel was released with Android 14, and I did a previous video on that. And I I stayed on the public stable build uh, that the Android, excuse me, that the Pixel 8 Pro was released on or released with for about a month, and then I just installed the uh enrolled into the beta program on my pixel a pro i believe it was last week and i again got, got another video about that but if it's available for your device um i would say go ahead and, and install it now it's up to you again it is a beta so you never know however i think the chances of you know having a a major bug or uh, chances of having wake lock or a battery drain of some sort it's very very small um, on this build it is phenomenal uh, I can guarantee you that I can't wait to, to I'm still learning the phone now it, it looks similar but different it's kind of hard to explain I wanted to record that video today uh, with the Android 14 on the S23 Ultra but uh, I'm still kind of uh, I want to make sure I know exactly all the changes and everything, but I can tell you there is a noticeable difference, especially the way it looks, the way it feels. It feels like the screen, the display is more crisp, like the icons, the app icons, the color. So it does, you will, you will notice it, it does look better. It does feel better. It's more smooth. Uh, I was going into RAM management and it looks like they manage the RAM a little better as far as where they allocate the random access memory to. Um, cause I was keeping, I always keep an eye on that. Um, and it looks like my normal daily usage on that device, the RAM usage is lower. It's about not drastically, but it's probably 800 megabytes lower, almost a gigabyte lower, which is, saying something because um it tells you that it's it's just much more optimized than um it, it's very nice very clean very very clean all right enough of android 14 we will create a separate video for that let me get into the news i did want to mention that though um, I did have a, uh, a, a viewer and or subscriber mention that. Uh, so let's get into the news real quick. Let me share this screen. I got three good stories, uh, uh, good news uh, uh, articles for us today. First up, now we got probably, I don't want to say the biggest, but definitely big news when it comes to Samsung, as we were just talking about. Look, Samsung um, uh, is a has a huge market share in the United States. Now, obviously, it's not as big as the iPhone market share, which I believe is about 45%. I think Samsung is somewhere down 20, 20 something percent, I believe. Don't quote me on that, I'm guessing. But um, nonetheless, it's a big market share um here in the u.s very very popular device the s23 series especially the s23 ultra sold like hotcakes and i expect the s24 to do very well as well now the s24 was spotted on geekbench and i know i just released a video um with the nothing phone 2 and uh the pixel 8 pro on Geekbench, Geekbench 6, we benchmarked both of them together and compared the scores. Fairly similar. So the Snapdragon 8 
plus Gen 1 that the uh, Nothing Phone 2 has is hangs in there with the uh, Tensor G3 that's in the Pixel 8 Pro. And um, off the top of my head, I don't remember these scores specifically. I guess we could pull those up, but wait until you see this. Now, if you're not familiar, we did a video um, on, I think, two daily tech news episodes ago. I believe it was episode five. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description if you're interested um, in regards to this Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip. Now that will be in the S24 series, specifically the S24 Ultra. And they're going to do the same thing they did with the S23 series. It's going to be a custom 8 Gen 3 for the S24 series. They're going to overclock it. They're going to tweak it. Uh, basically, that's all they do. They just overclock it, you know, a little bit um, and say it's a custom uh, <laughs> Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Um, however, it is a very, very powerful CPU. This is this year is the year that Snapdragon finally steps up to the plate and can really challenge Apple with their Bionic chip because in the latest benchmarks, it outscored the um, iPhone 15 Pro Max um, in some in some uh, benchmarks. Now, obviously, benchmarks don't tell the whole story. However, it can uh, you know help decipher how how powerful a cpu can be as far as maximum performance but you and i know you're not maximum performing your device whenever you use it right doing bait i don't game uh play games on my device you might and that's where it will, co will come in handy but um daily activities um emails recording like this editing videos that'll help um normal stuff you probably won't be able to tell the difference it might be a tad bit snappier uh, especially with the optimized android 14 but just pure and raw performance this is a beast so they finally have something to brag about um and they just benchmarked the s24 ultra now this blue this snapdragon 8 gen 3 blew away these scores um, from Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 um, and going back to 8 plus Gen 1 that's in the Nothing Phone 2 and the Tensor G3. Not even close. Look at these scores. So the S24 Ultra appeared on Geekbench, achieving a single and multi-core score of 2214 and 6744 respectively with 12 gigs of RAM. That is absolutely amazing it basically doubled the score um of the 8 plus gen 1 and i think it got about 50 percent better than the 8 gen 2 um i think i when i did my s23 ultra that has the 8 gen 2 uh you know what hang on one second um i could actually find this out Let's go to, let's go to, let's go to my channel here. Let's go to videos. Now this is going to be, can you search videos? Um, S23 Ultra Benchmark. Will that search mine? Yeah, here we go. Nothing fun to... Okay. Damn, that only has 165 views. What happened? Lord have mercy. <clears throat> I'm going to let that play in the background. While... You know what? Let's do this. Let's turn this down. I'm going to let that play. Um, and we'll, I'll go back... I'm going to go back and um, to one of our videos and see sp uh, specifically what the S23 Ultra scored so we can com compare the um, compare the scores. Now, the U.S. model is going to have 12 gigs of RAM. Look at this. The 12 gigs of RAM model, that's going to come in all U.S. versions with the Snapdragon processor. I think the base model, you know, they do base 8 gigs, 128. Yeah, they're done with that. 
they're going to do the base model of the S24 Ultra. It's going to be 12 gigs of RAM, 256 storage. And then they're going to have, uh, uh, they're going to keep the 12 gigs of RAM across the board for the Ultras, but then they're going to have a 512 and a one terabyte. Um, let me go back. And these ads are a pain in the ass. I have uh, YouTube Premium. Uh, anyways, we'll, we'll check on it in a minute, but not on that account. So um, the all they are throwing the Exynos processor back in the S24 uh, series, but outside of the U.S. in select markets, probably Europe. I'm assuming um, Asia uh, as well. Now that one is going to have eight gigs of RAM. The outside the U.S. version is going to have 8 gigs of RAM with the Exynos processor. Thank the Lord we are not getting that Exynos processor. We are getting the Snapdragon. But look at the scores. It scored less with the 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, 2051 compared to 2214 and 6204 compared to 6744. Uh, the Ultra variant should arrive. Yes, uh, Samsung exclusive variant. Yes, and they are. Uh, they, they have... Uh, we have mentioned that the S24 series is going to go all in on the AI stuff, just like uh, Google did here um, for this, um, uh, the year of 2024 and the S24 series. Apple will be doing the same thing with the iPhone 16. They were a little late to the party with this iPhone 15 that just released. Um, so they're going to have to wait a whole nother year before they, you know, have bring AI capabilities to a device. What does that mean, right? It just means like uh, when it comes to photo editing, when it comes to video editing, they're going to have implement AI stuff in there, just like Google has. <clears throat> when it comes to search features, certain stuff for the internet, it'll have, you know, little handy features here and there that help you out. You cut out the, um, the manual labor of some of these tasks that you do on your phone. <clears throat> Um, so this will be released. Let's see. Here's a model number. That's the score. Yeah, that was the eight gigs. We want the, tw the, the, uh, we're not concerned about the Exynos version. So we basically just, that's basically it. It will tell you the scores. Now it's going to have a clock. It's going to be a 3.4 gigahertz, uh, CPU, the main core that is prime core, they call it. Um, is this a nine core? I believe it's an eight core CPU. That's the, in the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Um, yeah, so that'll be released in January, a month early. They've actually released the, um, uh, what do they call it? Unpacked event. They have it scheduled and they announced it. Uh, we will definitely live stream that, uh, um, uh, live reaction, what, ha what have you. I'm going to order mine, um, as soon as they're available. Oh, the colors came in too, real quick. Let's see. Okay, let me see what this scored. So the Nothing Phone 2 scored 17, 46, and 46. So 17 and 46. Let's see. 17 and 46. Okay, and this one's 2214 and 67. Yeah, so these numbers on this 8 Gen 3 alone. Now, let me look and see what the S23, uh, yeah, S23 Ultra scored. Come on now. Yeah, it was weird because my Nothing Phone 2 outperformed my S23 Ultra with the 8 Gen 2. If you look at these scores, um, it really, really surprised me. Um, not sure how or why that happened um the nothing phone 2 is a beast man um but anyways those are the, here's the s23 on the right here is the nothing phone 2 this has a the nothing phone 2 again 8 plus gen 1 and then this has a 8 gen 2 so they really really um put that cpu on steroids and performs wonderfully um uh, you can't even tell the difference uh that this one's six months older so yeah, look at these scores. And then you got 17 and 13, 46, 36. And then look at these scores. So it's noticeably faster, right? 
So this thing's going to be blazing fast. It's going to be perfect for uh, all the gamers out there. Um, just like I said, battery life should be should be wonderful. They're going to upgrade the batteries. These devices are going to be... Look, initially, I was not going to upgrade to the S24 Ultra. I was satisfied with my... Look, well, actually, before this S23 Ultra, I had a Note 20 Ultra, and I was happy with that. But that's when I... And I was going to keep that. But I started this channel about over a year ago. It's like, well, damn, I, I do need a uh, the flagship Samsung for this channel. So I got it script. So I, I got, and I've had the S22 Ultra, but I had the Note 20 Ultra at the time. And um, um, anyway, so I wasn't going to upgrade the S23 Ultra, but I did because of this channel. Now, and when, I, when I got the S23 Ultra, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to hang on to this. I really, really, really love this phone. But then everybody's going to flat displays. Then I find out Samsung on the S24 Ultra is going flat display. And I was like, oh. so now I'm going to have to upgrade to the S24 Ultra. So, um, yeah, that's how it goes. But uh, that's how they get you. Um, and just like the Flip Z Flip 5, we got one of those this year. Um, and the only negative was the cameras. Because, you know, now it looks like they solve their hinge and all that stuff. And the outer display is much bigger. Well, next year, it's going to be the same phone, but they're going to put the flagship sensors, the camera sensors, in this new uh, 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 Z Flip 6. So it'll be just like it is now, but with the S with the Samsung Galaxy S24 cameras. So it's like, oh, I'm going to have to get that. So anyways, uh, look, Samsung's got phenomenal trade-in offers, best in the business. So, uh, you know, why not, right? Um, okay. So look, that'll do it for the Samsung S24 Ultra Geekbench uh, performance benchmark scores. It looks to be a absolute beast. Now, let's get into Okay, <clears throat> I'm back. Sorry. Now let's get into um, our next topic of the day. Let me go to, it's actually really cool, but and I'm, I was happy to basically see this. Um, as you know, or maybe you don't, but um, uh, two, two points. Uh, I'm not a big smart smartwatch person, um, but I did order the CMF by nothing. It's a nothing brand, uh, uh, Watch Pro. Basically, it looks like an Apple Watch uh, Ultra or Apple Watch, um, but it does pair perfectly with this Nothing Phone 2. I do want to test it. Um, and I am going to use it, although I don't, uh, you know, whatever. I'm going to do it for the channel, right? Um, but moving in, what, this next watch we're going to get into, big news, because I was actually interested in getting it on the very first, the OG model, which was last year. Now, the second one is getting ready to be released, and... It's made some big news here because the Nothing Watch 2 is going to have Wear OS. Yay. Um, depending on how you how you like it. Look, let's get into the pros and cons. The first OnePlus watch did have a proprietary operating system like uh, OnePlus OS. It was very minimal. It had workout features. Look, it got some fanfare, some, you know, uh, 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 some good reviews, some bad reviews. People, the battery lasted forever. However, some of the sensors were having trouble take uh, tracking your, your health. And um, it, it does have OnePlus proprietary software. So it's not optimized. Excuse me. It's optimized. It's not updated <clears throat> as much as it should. Now, Pros and cons. When you add an Android Wear, Wear OS 4 is their new operating system for Android Wear. It's supposed to be uh, more fluid, more optimized, better battery life. But here's the catch. When you add, have you ever noticed like this CMF watch that I ordered uh, by nothing? It has battery life of like two weeks. Two weeks. You only charge it one every 14 days now. And the, noth excuse me, the OnePlus Watch 1 um had one plus software on there and that would go for about i think 12 10 10 to 12 days on one charge 
Well, you add Android Wear and it only lasts like a day or two at the most. Now, why is that? Why just adding Android Wear, the battery life just sucks. Um, uh, it sucks the life out of the device. Why is that? Well, Android Wear has so many processes going on in the background. It's continually syncing with all of the Google servers and uh, Google Play servers and all of your data um, is constantly syncing in the background. It's constantly talking to the servers. All of that probably hundreds of times uh, uh, per minute, per hour. Uh, I don't know what the number is, but it's huge. Huge enough to, to take your battery life from uh, uh, 12 to 14 days to one to two days. It is that drastic. Um, if you go look at go look at watches that do not have Wear OS on them, and the majority of them, smartwatches, uh, even if it's a cheap little cheap uh, Chinese smartwatch, the Xiaomi watches are cool, the Redmi watches are cool. Those last 10 to 14 days on one charge. As soon as you add a Wear OS, it 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 sucks and drains that much life out of the battery. Um, so good and bad thing. This will have Android Wear on it. However, don't expect much out of the battery life. For those of you that had the first watch that plan on or contemplating getting the second one, beware. That's going to be a major um, uh, uh, issue or a major thing you're going to need to think about before ordering this device. Now, it's going to have, it's going to look similar to the first one, right? It says this OnePlus Watch 2. It's said to have a larger 1.43 inch AMOLED display, an improvement from its predecessor. I believe the last one was a 1.31, something like that, and will be powered by the new, this is a new one, Snapdragon W5 Gen 1 chip. Uh, the original OnePlus watch received negative reviews due to its unreliable step tracking, yep, and clunky custom operating system. We just talked about that. Um, but the OnePlus Watch 2 aims to uh, rectify these issues by Wear OS 4. If the OnePlus Watch 2 is successful, it will contribute to OnePlus's winning streak following the positive reception of their OnePlus 11 smartphone, OnePlus Open, uh, foldable phone and the uh, upcoming one plus 12 which looks to be a good device um let's look at the pictures here i do believe we have a picture uh let's see um yeah see it says the first watch featured its solid specs and a long battery life but disappointed with the software. So they are going to trade battery life for good software, basically. So here, here is a uh, look at the watch. So you have three different flavors. I think uh, those two on the right and left look like the dark colored one. And this one's a silver. So it looks like they'll have two different versions. You do have a circular, circular design with a protruding uh right side it looks like and you see you can tell there's a little speaker inlet right there interesting design most of these have little circles right that little dials like on the pixel watch but this one i bet i bet it's a multiple use um uh, component where you can like like it's like a volume button on your phone right you got one button but you push but the top will turn one will make a uh you know volume up volume down this will this will uh Sorry, I got something going on. I got my cat down here. Um, this is the back side of it. I'm sure this will be waterproof. Let's see if there's any other. Um, let's see. If, let's see if this has anything about waterproof. Interesting design here. Let's see. Is it waterproof? Any other specs? Okay, the original one at 1.39. <clears throat> let's see. Hey, what the hell? Okay. Inexpensive OnePlus Nord watch. That one's on AliExpress. Let's see. Do, 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 do. According to the leaker, yes, yes. We got just got that Wear OS for um, OnePlus Open. Okay, so that's... Look, I don't. I was gonna see when is this gonna be released. I it doesn't have a release date, but I think it will be released. Hopefully before 
Christmas time. So about probably here in about a, I'm thinking, I don't know, to be honest. It says, okay, no, I was just looking to see if it had a release date on here. I don't see a release date, but if this interests you, just stay tuned to the channel. Um, I'll keep y'all updated. I know uh, we have some people are smart watch users and some aren't. So um, if this does interest you, just stay tuned to the channel and I'll I'll, I'll keep y'all updated as far as when we get a leak on the release date uh, for this one. And um, I will definitely, definitely let y'all know. Okay. As we roll in to our last daily tech news topic, it is a definitely an important one. Um, it is it involves not only Android users, it involves iPhone users. So this basically incorporates probably ninety nine percent of the people. Well, I don't know. Well, a, l- a large majority of people, right? Whoever uses an iPhone and an Android, which I was going to say 99% of people in the world, but you know, give it, there's people that don't have smartphone, but that number is getting smaller. But check this out. Some interesting stuff. Very, very interesting. And I'll make this quick. We'll make this long. But I did want to um, get into, uh, look, the messaging system is messed up messaging from an android to an iphone iphone to android group messaging the uh, iphone snobs like i like to say um always get so butt hurt or in a um always get so upset when an android user or or they'll exclude an Android user in group messaging because it messes up the uh, quality of uh, photos being sent. It'll mess up the quality of videos uh, uh, shared in that message or group messaging. And you get the stupid green bubble, right? The iPhone users hate that green bubble. They want everything blue. Uh, A message from another iPhone user is blue. If an iPhone user gets a message from an Android user, it's green. Now, our household is all Android. Uh, my parents use Android. Uh, my grandparents use Android. Um, however, uh, my sister and her family uh, use iPhone and, or iOS, iPhone, iOS devices, iPads, all that stuff, Macs, MacBooks. But I always hear my parents and my sister complaining about the stupid messaging. Uh, my, my parents send my sister a picture. It's, it's grainy. My sister sends a video of, um, my niece or her daughter to my parents. The video is jacked up, right? It's grainy. They can't really see it. Well, Apple actually does that for a reason. Uh, whether you want to believe me or not, that's true. It's come out in court documents. Um, they actually do that for a reason. They mess it up on purpose. So the Android user gets fed up and finally gives in and gets an iPhone to get clear messages to use iMessage. Well, Google has done their part on the Android side by incorporating RCS, rich communication, uh, RCS service, rich communication service, rich communication, something like that. Um, where it's basically Android's version of iOS, but it's different technologies. But I'm just saying that so in layman's terms, so you can uh, everybody can kind of understand. Um, but RCS is the uh, worldwide um, accepted techno- messaging technology that Google has adopted and also promoted um, for Android devices. Now, if you don't know, Android messages, Google, the same messenger you get on your, that comes with your Pixel 8 uh, Pro or Pixel phone is put on the same messenger that's uh, a stock messenger on your Samsung device. Or it's also the default messaging app for the Nothing Phone 2. So, and all three are on RCS. So that that allows for uh 
clearer pictures, larger file sizes to be shared. Um, um, basically smart text where if you share a link or a YouTube link, you can watch the YouTube video inside of your messenger instead of having to go to YouTube. And it also sends, um, clear detailed, um, video, uh, um, videos, right? Video files, um, but between Android devices. Well, iPhone, like I said, <clears throat> long story short, iPhone has basically, solidified its iMessage in its uh, closed source. Uh, I believe, uh, well, obviously Android is open source, but I believe the messages app is too, right? So uh, carriers and or another person can implement RCS into a messaging app. With iMessage, you can't do that. Um, but we do have, let me get this going. We do have something very interesting. Um, now, Google has tried to get Apple to accept RCS in iMessage, meaning accept the RCS technology inside iMessage. So you get the clear photos. So you get the larger file size sharing. You get the uh, clear video sent. Apple has stood 10 toes down on their decision. And I believe Tim Cook or somebody, I believe it was Tim Cook or somebody inside Apple, I was, it was quoted, um, maybe six months ago, a year ago, he said over my dead body, quote unquote, meaning, and he was referring to incorporating RCS or incorporating Android techno messaging technology inside iOS or, or iMessage. They feel iMessage is superior to everything else. Well, Google opts for a different approach to get iMessage to support RCS. If you don't know the EU, the reason why iPhone uh, switched to USB type C this year is because EU, the European Union, the group of European countries, they have a union. They basically forced Apple, well, not basically, they did, to switch to USB type C. How do they do that? They made a law that said any electronic device sold in the Europe, Europe uh, countries have to have a USB type C charging port or charger. Um, and they put that in law. It passed. Now that was not supposed to go into effect until 2025. Apple said, well, what the hell? We'll just throw it on this iPhone 15. So they were going to have to do it if they were going to sell any iPhones in Europe. Now they could have opted for Apple could have said, screw you. Um, but then they wouldn't sell any. That's a huge market for them. And they could not afford to lose all European countries because uh, Europe was going, going to ban the sale of iPhones if they didn't have USB Type-C. Well, they're taking that same approach with iMessage and RCS. So this is very, very interesting. This could be the first. Now, it's a lot easier to modify software. And we'll get into it in a second for the Europe and the US. Um, because look, Apple could, uh, being location-based, if it knows you're in Europe or it's a iPhone sold outside of the U.S. or it's an iPhone sold in Europe, they could have a special iMessage just for Europe countries that allows RCS. Uh, um, and everything inside the U.S. or any other place would still be it would still be locked down and 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 uh, not support RCS. Um, but this is the first steps to legally getting something done because Google's done everything they can, everything. Look, this has been a struggle for, I can't tell you how long, for years. Um, probably RCS really got, got going and picking up steam maybe four or five years ago. And, but with the battle with our, with, uh, the battle with iMessage and Android messaging has gone back like 10 years. Um, so Google, alongside several other EU companies, has written a letter to the European European Commission in hopes of forcing Apple to adopt RCS messaging standard. It says Apple has remained adamant, like I said, against adopting the RCS standard, suggesting that users utilize more than one messaging app, such as a uh, uh, in such a move isn't required. So Apple's saying, we'll just 
you know, message the user on WhatsApp or message the user on Telegram or message use a signal, right? Because that's what people are doing now, basically using um, WhatsApp. Now, outside of the U.S., WhatsApp is huge. I think that's what people are doing. They're basically outside of the U.S. Everybody's using WhatsApp. Um, everybody's using Telegram um, and Signal too, but that's not as popular. WhatsApp is probably the standard when it comes to messaging. So iPhone users in Brazil aren't, they use iMessage, but predominantly are using WhatsApp, right? And that's what Apple's saying. Well, there's other messaging apps you can use. Uh, and then it says in September, the EU stated they would launch an investigation into whether or not Apple will need to adopt RCS messaging into iMessage. So that was what, a couple months ago? Let's see, I'm not sure if we got an update. Um, so that's why I mentioned the USB type C um, deal because since the EU passed that and forced Apple's hand with the USB type C, Google is saying, well, shoot, let's uh, try to force their hand um, through this, through, through this method, right? Through the EU, since they were successful with the USB type C. Now look, there's two ways to look at it, right? Well, three, one, you could be, I don't, I don't care, but one is you can look at Google as the bad guy. Why are you trying to force Apple to do this and to do that? And you can look at it the other way. Uh, so the second way is that saying, uh, well, yeah, there should be, um, look, iMessage is not going away for the iPhone user that nothing will change. Absolutely nothing. It's all in the code. It's all behind the scenes. It's all in how the app is constructed. So when you're using iMessage, you're not going to notice anything. The only thing that'll change, and it'll still have a green dot when it, when an Android user or somebody outside of iOS messages you. So it'll still be a green dot. However, the pictures will be clear. The file size sharing will get larger and the videos will be clear and longer, I'm assuming too, right? Since you can transfer larger file sizes. So you can probably send, instead of sharing a 15 second video that's grainy, uh, you'll be able to send a five minute video that's HD clear, like the way it should be. So I'm on that uh, train where, look, the iPhone user is not, is not gonna notice. They're really not. Um, it's, well, they will. They're gonna notice clearer pictures, better, uh, of videos when messaging a Android user, right? But other than that, everything's going to be the same. So I don't know where this goes, honestly. I think if Google is able, in the EU, is able to pass a law, I think, um, because Apple's real snooty, like they're, they think they're, you know, hot shit, they're the best thing since sliced bread. Um, I think um because apple does not want this to happen so i think what they're going to do is make it location specific i think if the eu was able to pass something a law i think um it would only work in inside the uh europe countries basically and i think in the u.s it'll be just like it is right now i, I don't think it'll i don't think it'll change anything here where we are sitting but if they are able to pass a law in europe that that makes forces them to uh, adopt rcs in the code of imessage look that's a good first step but i think it's still going to be years away before we in the u.s see anything change but um it says it is paramount that businesses can reach all their customers taking advantage of modern communication services with enriched messaging features, the letter reads. Through iMessage, business users are only able to send enriched messages to iOS users and must rely on traditional SMS for all other users. So yeah, that's right. If it's an Android to iPhone, it falls back to SMS, the old school messaging system. RCS is rich communication services, meaning uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a better, newer, more uh, uh, technologically um, sounded service, function, communication. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if... Oh, also wanted to tell you too. Um, check this out. So there's there's an app, 
and I reviewed it on our on our uh, channel. It's uh, Sunbird, the Sunbird app. Here, let's let's look it up. And this really works. Like we we tested it. So, um, and it will allow for an Android user to message an iPhone user, and it will show up as a green uh, dot or green message for the iPhone user. And for the Android user, the iPhone user does not have to download the Sunbird app. The Android user has to download the Sunbird app. I'll link it in the description and the video that I reviewed it. Um, and we'll, we'll look at it here real quick. Um, uh, the iPhone user will not have to do anything. Just use the phone as normal. The Android user has to download the Sunbird app and you can add your basically any of your messaging apps you can add it in the sunbird app and then message all from that one app it's really cool um let's see so that's basically it look i mean there's a few more paragraphs but it i basically wrapped it up already um and they're complaining apple's a gatekeeper uh because it's closed source and uh you know they basically call Pull all the strings when it comes to technology apple does but um anyways let, let me uh let's check this out watch uh sunbird app sunbird messaging so there you go so i'm gonna link this wait is this still in beta i have it well oh i bet they gave me access Okay, so I do have this. Uh, so that's right. It's still in beta, but sign up for their wait list and they should accept you. I They accepted me and I've used it and tested it. But um, this is it right here. Join the wait list. I'll link it in the description. So what this does, and I'll get off here real quick. No Apple device or server required. It just works. It does. Um, it's a pretty quick setup. They claim it's end-to-end -end encrypted unified messaging so for the android user you can have all your messaging apps in the sunbird app and then um uh use that app for your messaging so it's really really cool and like i said i will link that in the description please go sign up for the beta please check it out and um yeah so that'll do it i really appreciate you joining us on this episode of daily tech news um i will compile some more cool tech stories here for you in these next few days and we will get right back at you. For eSim Studios, this is Taylor Bell. I do appreciate the time and please have a great weekend.